Hello everyone, welcome to our today's session. In this session, we are going to learn about the relationship between the displacement and velocity. And also we are going to learn how to convert the displacement time graph into velocity time graph. So before starting our session, if you are new to our channel, please subscribe and click the bell icon to stay updated with our latest videos. And also, if you like our video, give us a thumbs up and share with your friends. So now, first we'll see what is the relationship between the displacement and the velocity. Here you can see a displacement time graph illustrating a motion of a car. Okay, so this graph is plotted by making the time on the x-axis and the displacement on the y-axis and the displacement is shown in s and the unit meter and the time is shown as t and unit seconds so now let's consider the point a so here you can observe if the time is equal to one second then the displacement is equals to three meter now let's say another point point b in that point if the time is equals to 5 seconds then the displacement of the car is equal to 15 meter so i hope that you have understood this part now let's move to the next main thing so now from this graph we can get the velocity so the velocity of the motion is equals to the gradient of the graph so higher the gradient higher the velocity the lower the gradient then the lower the velocity so now we are having a question on mind how to calculate the gradient yes it's really simple now you have to take two any points on y coordinate and you have to get the difference so from this graph, let's consider two y coordinates points as b and c. So you have to subtract b minus c. So even you can consider b, e or b, f any points, but it should be in y coordinate. Now let's consider to any points in the x coordinates. Then from that x coordinates, let's find the difference. So from the graph, I'll select the points A and C. So A minus C. So now we have the difference between the Y coordinates and the difference between the X coordinates. So we can calculate the gradient by dividing those two coordinates. So here you can observe that I have selected two distant points to find the gradient this is because if you get to distance points the result will be more accurate and also we know an equation that velocity is equal to displacement over time so how did you get this you know that gradient is equals to the difference between y coordinates divided by the difference between the x coordinates so here the difference between y coordinates is the displacement of the body during the time interval and since the x axis represents time the difference between the x coordinates of two points is a time interval therefore we get when the displacement is divided by time is the velocity i hope that now you have a clear idea on the relationship between the displacement and the velocity so now let's convert the st graph to vt graph so now let's see the first case in this graph you can see a horizontal line so what does it mean so as you can see as time goes the displacement remains constant which means the object is at rest 
so for a duration of time till the line is horizontal right and also we know the gradient of the st graph will give us the velocity so here the gradient of horizontal line is zero so in this case how should the vt graph look like so it should be in the x axis this is because since the gradient of the graph is equal to the velocity so velocity also becomes zero so always remember that the area on the vt graph will give us the displacement or distance over that interval of time and the slope of the position time graph will give the velocity over the time interval now let's move on to the case number two so here the slope is a straight line we know for all straight line graphs the gradient are constant therefore the graph shows a motion of constant velocity or the uniform velocity and here the gradient also positive this positive value gradient shows that the velocity is positive or the object is moving in the positive direction so in this case vt graph should be a uniform positive velocity which means the graph will be in a horizontal line but constant now let's move on to case number three here you can see a negative gradient as well as here the gradient is constant here the negative gradient suggests that the velocity is also negative so you have to keep in mind this is not a motion of decreasing velocity it is a motion of uniform velocity in the negative direction so the negative value of gradient simply shows that the object moves in the negative direction so in this case the vt graph should be uniform negative velocity then it will be a horizontal line on vt graph but negative now let's continue with non straight line graph when you consider this curve the gradient of the curve increases so how do i say that the gradient increases yes when we have a curved graphs we have to select few points and we have to draw the tangents and that tangent should be extended until the x axis so you can see this in this graph now we should consider the acute angles that is made by the tangent okay so you can see the acute angle increases from the point a to point b then as the acute angle increases the gradient will also increase so we can see that velocity of the object also increases over time therefore the graph will look like this and also we can say that the motion starts from rest and moves with a constant acceleration now let's move on to our next curve graph so here what happens the gradient of the graph decreases so this decrease gradient suggests that the velocity of the object also decreases therefore vt graph will be as shown in the diagram and also we can say the motion start with a velocity and uniformly decelerate and comes to a rest so these are the main five cases of graph and let's learn some questions in the next session thank you everyone